Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary, this time for Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.09 beta. It's a great matchup between Ave Have and his Man of the West faction against Ectelion and his Dwarven faction on the map Forts of Anduin. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the left side of the map we have the red Man of the West player Ave Have against the yellow Dwarven player Ectelion on the map Forts of Anduin, which is a reskin for Forts of Aizen. We will have a mineshaft into the Hall of Warriors. On the other side we will see two farms incoming. Um, and you know, very important to mention is the fact that both players are always picking random factions. This way, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, they don't know against which faction they are playing. That's why we will be seeing a lot of the, you know, most of the time players starting with a PowerPoint ability from the spellbook that can reveal the opponent's faction. And there we go, Manwood will be already used from Ave Have. And in this game I will also try to explain you guys what are the biggest differences between Battle for Middle Earth 2 and the Rise of the Witch King. Um, for example the Alvin Wood. It gives you, in the case of the Man of the West faction, only 35% increased armor. I mean, that is obviously quite a lot, but when we are comparing that with the Alvin Wood from the, from the Rise of the Witch King, Alvin Wood from the Alvin faction, for example, gives you 50% damage, 50% armor, and on top of that also fear resistant. So it's much more powerful than uh, the Man Wood in Battle for Middle Earth 2. On the other side, um, we will have Rallying Coal start, which is also different. Rallying Coal in Battle for Middle Earth 2 doesn't give you 50% armor, gives you only 50% increased damage and 25% increased combat experience. Uh, we have Pikeman start, and Ectelion is already creeping the work layer at the bottom right side. You're gonna hit level 2, just like in Rise of the Witch King, and if you use Rallying Coal, because of the increased combat experience, you're gonna hit level 2 and around a quarter, so they will obviously get some more experience. And on the other side we have one soldier battalion coming from the barracks and he has also one arch uh, archer range up on the field, he is building multiple farms, and Ectelion is already around the top left side with the builder and he's going for a mineshaft and <laughs> that's gonna be devastating because now he has two guardians inside and one pikeman level 2 and rallying coal is available, but manwood isn't. So that's gonna be very very hard for Ave Havi to defend. At the same time he's moving with the soldier battalion around the bottom right side. He should be easily able to destroy this mineshaft. But there, go, there comes the first big attack from the Dwarven player Ectelion. Rallying Call has been used. That's a smart move from Ave Havi. He knows he can't face against those units. He wanna make sure to destroy the mineshaft first. This way Ectelion can't bring more reinforcements. One farm has been taken down. And also the archer range is getting melted down actually. Charge attack, whoo, <laughs> that was a nice one. Like a trample from the horses. They dealt, uh, you know, quite a lot of damage. The fortress is obviously helping. He was also building a wall of expansion because he was kind of scared that he can go for the fortress. Again, like mentioned several times before, the structures, including the fortress, isn't aren't as tanky as in Rise of the Witch King in Battle for Middle Earth 2. And yeah, that's quite devastating first push. On the other side, he was able to destroy the mineshaft with the soldier. He's gonna pot potentially go for the second here, which is gonna be very important. If he takes it down, it's gonna be quite, quite good. But, you know, that's gonna be very hard, because look at that. Ectelion is building more mineshafts, so he's gonna try to bring more reinforcements. Uh, Dwarven faction, just like in Rise of the Witch King, is quite snowballing faction in Battle for Middle Earth 2 as well. And losing the barracks but also archer range means Ave Have can't get any reinforcements on the field any soon. And everything is looking in favor of the Dwarven player Ectelion. Who is now building up a Forge Works for the Battle Wagon action. And that was lucky. He was barely able to destroy the mineshaft. And look at that, because of the slow mobility of these guardians, the soldiers, they will get away. And because they are level 2, they will have the self-regeneration as well. Um, charge attack has been used once again. The soldiers got taken down, the archer unit has to, has to disengage. 
the mineshaft was protected. And just like in uh, Rise of the Witch King, the archers without fire arrow upgrades, they won't deal too much damage to the mineshaft. It's gonna take them a lot of time to destroy that one. Now we have two barracks. This one has kind of bugs around it. The building is already finished, but it looks like, you know, it's still building up. Obviously, they're gonna fix that problem within the next days. And this patch is still in the beta, so it's not available for everyone just yet. But I will, you know, keep you guys updated. Once it's released, you can download that also from the Discord. The link to the Discord with over 800 Battle for Middle-earth players is gonna be in the video description down below. Okay. So we have uh, a level 2 uh, Forge Works. He might go for the Siege Hammers, which is gonna increase the damage from those Guardians against structures, and this way he can even commit to the Fortress from Ave Havi, the Man of the West player. Rallying Cole has been used once again. Uh, Ectelion, the Dwarven player, is sitting on almost 8 power points now, 450 command points collected. And we have the same amount of command points also for Ave Havi and his Man of the West faction. He has collected 6 power points after the Elvin Wood, which is available now. And unlike in Rise of the Witch King, Man of the West doesn't have Rebuild in the, in the spellbook. That's not a thing. So with that being said, um, it's gonna be almost impossible to protect the Fortress once Ectelion is ready with the Siege Hammers. But he's not going for the Siege Hammers, he's going for the Battle Wagons, which makes sense. Because unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the Siege Works or the Forge Works in this case has to be level 2 before you can recruit any of these battle wagons. Soldier battalion standing by. And actually, uh, surprisingly, Ave Havi is still in the game and he's creeping the Warclay at the left side of the river. We have still... I mean, obviously this is the reskin of Hots of Eisen, so we have the same amount of creeps, we have the same structures in at the bottom left side, in at the top right side. But it's like more like a modern design of um, Thoughts of Eisen, which is the most played map in all Battle for Middle Earth games. Okay, the mineshaft is gonna be taken down next from those tower guards. Tower guards, you can recruit them in Battle for Middle Earth 2 from a level 1. Uh, barracks, you don't have to level it up to level 2. Obviously, because you don't have Rohan Spearman units in the barracks, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. Uh, what's that? Tower guards gain uh, plus five percent speed at level three, five, and seven. So you can once they are level seven, and that's one of the other differences between VFME two and oh, the battle wagon is running it down. Uh, the leveling up experience from the normal units, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which they are able to level up to level five max. In Battle for Middle Earth two, you can actually make your tower guards or every other unit level up till level ten. Which, oh, by the way. In uh, Rise of the Witch King is only available for heroes and for mini heroes. Okay, now we have a stable and the first Gondor Knight Battalion is joining the battlefield. During all this time, the Tower Guards are gonna make it. He's gonna use the Alvin Mood once again offensively. Uh, we had a Man of Deal summon, but there is no follow up, and that's why he won't be able to deal the damage he's looking for. He's gonna. Abi Abi is gonna actually use the Hobbit Allies summon offensively. You have the gang here, Frodo, uh, Samwise, Gamgee, Merry, and Peregrine Took are all joining the battlefields. On the Alvin Wood, they have also more armor, 35% armor, that's why they are a bit tankier. They won't die quite fast from the fort uh, to the fortress. Nice clumping here from Ave Ave, look at that. He was able to get behind the building and the barracks, which is called Hall of Warriors from Exelion, has been taken down. Now it's the other way around, look at that. The game can turn within a second. Ave Havi was so behind from the beginning of the game and now he is shining bright like a diamond and hitting like an absolute truck, boys. 500 command points for Ave Havi. And we have 500 command points also for Ectelion, who was forced to go for heal. The battle wagon has been taken down, but the level 2 farm is gonna go down as well. And just like in... Rise of the Witch King, the level 2 structures are giving you more command points and also more resources. I can't even show you that because no one has a level 2 farm or even a mineshaft up on the field for now. Because they keep losing the mineshafts, they keep losing the farms pretty much all the time and that's what we expect from players on this skill level. They know what to do, 
They know how to come back. And they know how to win those games. Also, this farm, which is almost level 2, is gonna be taken down quite fast. And we see level 10 guardians, ladies and gentlemen. That's something we don't get to see in Rise of the Witch King. Not only because they can't level up to level 10. But also, we can't even see most of the time the units hitting level 5. And the reason is simple. In Battle for Middle Earth 2, gaining the experience with heroes but also units is just much, much easier than in the Rise of the Witch King. We have 400 command points now for both the players. It looks like the tower guards from Ave Havi are creeping the troll layer at the bottom left side. We have the troll at the top right and the work layer here, but also the golem is lurking around. So if you capture the golem, and by the way, guys, let me know in the comment section below if you want to, if you want me to make a video about the ring heroes of Battle for Middle Earth 2 because they are quite impressive. They are a little bit stronger. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much, but they are a bit stronger than in Rise of the Witch King. And if you want to see them, their abilities and what they are able to do, how much they cost, let me know. I would be happy to make a video like that for you guys. So obviously, you need to kill the golem gonna drop the ring, you're gonna capture the ring with one of your units or heroes, you're gonna bring it to the fortress. Depending on what faction you are playing, you are able to make Galadriel, you are able to make Sauron. And those, <laughs> those heroes, they are game-changing. They can literally win you the game. They have also Gloin on the fields now. He is level 4 already, that's what I said before. Um, that's leveling up in Battle for Middle-earth 2 is just much, much easier. Then in uh, Rise of the Witch King. You can go for the Elven Warriors now from the inn at the bottom left side. Which he was able to capture with those Tower Guards. And also the creeps in Battle for Middle-earth 2 are way harder to creep. Look at that. He's, you know, the works, they are trampling down those soldiers. So creeping a work now, unlike in uh, Rise of the Witch King, is not going to be possible with goblins or orcs in Battle for Middle-earth 2. Slam can be also used. I mean, the abilities are pretty much the same. So we have Slam, we have Shake Foundation, and we have the Shatterhammer from Gloin. Also in Battle for Middle-earth 2. He's gonna rebuild now the Forge Works. We have a level almost 3 battalion of Guardians here. He's spamming more and more Guardians. He never went for the um, Archer range though. Leaving one treasure part on the ground that hurts my eyes. We have still the work layer also at the right side of the river still alive. Look, look at that, Gloin is leveling up quite fast, guys. And level 10 is gonna be the time for him to shine. We are also getting um, Elven Warriors on the field from the inn at the bottom left side. So let's check the power points and command points. The Man of the West player, Ave Have, has 600 command points collected. Almost 10 power points available after Elven Wood, Hobbit Elias, and the Rallying Call. On the other side, we have 11 power points collected. For uh, the Dwarven player Exelion after the Man of Dale Allies summon, which is going to be ready in the next 20 seconds. Rallying Cole and Heal. And he's sitting on 500 command points right now. Beautiful. Um, this game kind of can go... I, I don't want to guess actually who's going to win this one. Because right now, don't get me wrong, it looks great for Ave Have. But, you know... Obviously, like mentioned before, Man of Deal Allies is going to be ready for uh, Exilion, which can be used defensively. This Mineshaft is going to be taken down. We have level 10 Guardians are hitting like an absolute truck, boys. Level 10, man, that's quite rare. Okay, he's using the Alvin Woods um, offensively. Man of Deal is going to be used defensively. The Forge Works is going to be taken down once again from those Gondor Knights. But he needs to be careful, he's losing those Gondor Knights quite fast to the Pikemen. This Mineshaft is going to be protected, the Men of Deal are saving the day. And I think that's a mistake from Ave Havi. Knowing that the Men of Deal is ready in position, should just he should just wait. Because they are not going to be there forever. Every summoned unit in Battle for Middle Earth games has a duration in which they are able to fight for you. And, you know, obviously if they get killed or if the time is down, they will be forced to leave Middle-earth, and in this situation, Ave Havi should just sit back and wait. But I think he was—he wanted to overcome it. He was able to take down the Mineshaft. He will also be able to kill some of these Men of Deals. The level 10 Guardian unit is um, spawning over time. We have Boromir, the captain of Gondor, joining the battlefield. The same abilities also like in Rise of the Witch King. 
Um, I see two barracks and one stable level one. He was not rebuilding the archer range after losing it for the first time. Okay, we have the ranger summon, one of the ranger summon from the spellbook, this time from Ave Ave, but I don't know I don't know the reason behind that. I can't tell you that guys, because again, their damage output against the structures is gonna be quite limited. And there is not enough follow-up. Boromir um, is gonna chase down those guardians. We have uh, still some Gondor Knights on the field. And Boromir, the Horn of Gonzo, unlike in uh, in Rise of the Witch King, is gonna be available with level 3. Remember, in Rise of the Witch King, it's available with level 2. We have also the brother from the same mother from Boromir joining the battlefield. His name is Faramir. The lover or the husband of Eowyn, which by the way is also a hero from the Men of the West faction. The rangers are, you know, shooting quite fast, but they are not dealing any damage to the battle wagon. Bloin is level 7, trust me on that one. Level 10, he's gonna, he's gonna be very powerful. The Shatterhammer is looking so beautiful. Oil barrel will be used. By the way guys, really important to mention is the fact that Ectelion in this game is the on host player. So he has the host advantage, which obviously means quite a lot in Battle for Middle Earth games. Okay, this time we have the Hobbit Allies summon also from Ave Havid, but being used defensively. And I feel like the you know the Donut and Ranger summon offensively was kinda pointless. He was not achieving anything with that. Uh Gloin was using the Sheikh Foundation, the barracks has been taken down. He's quite healthy still, Farami shooting him down. He was also using the Wanding Arrow. Wanding Arrow is a single uh, target range attack that causes high damage. Uh, and certain monsters to flee. So if you are using that on some certain monsters, don't ask me which kind of monsters because I don't know. <laughs> they will be running away from Faramir. <laughs> Dancing around the Rosie, he's, level, he's healing up. Slam is dealing quite a lot of damage to Faramir as well. During all this time, the Hobbits are defending the farms of uh, Ave Ave, who is now rebuilding his barracks, which he lost before. The barracks is level 2, which is gonna make it a bit more tankier. And also the units are gonna be joining the battlefield 10% faster. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> they are literally one health. I think Varamir has to now use the uh, winning arrow. Just demolish the farm. Because that's risky what he's doing, guys. That's risky what he's doing. Okay, he's casting the winning arrow now. I think that should be enough, right? Nice, beautiful. He went, he was getting so much levels from that. Now he's also be, he's also able to get on the horse. The battle wagon has been taken down, dying to the tower guards. We have also King Dane joining the battlefield. Gondor Knights from Ave Havid, you need to be careful. Look at King Dane, boys. He's leveling up like crazy. What? He was literally level 1 and killing a couple of Gondor Knights, and he's level 4 already. I mean, obviously, he was using the Rallying Call. And in Battle for Middle Earth games, you are also sharing experience with the allied units around you. So, in order to level up with a hero, you don't have to necessarily kill the enemy unit yourself. But when one of your units, you know, pikemen or guardians or whatsoever, are killing the units when your hero is nearby, he's leveling up. And he was level 1, now he's already level 5. And I think, uh, look at that, half a level. That's quite a lot. Yes, leadership, by the way. And also leadership works differently in Battle for Middle-earth 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King. High tier spell by the way as you can see category. And then you have the Mighty Rage. Which is pretty much the same like in, in, in Rise of the Witch King. But the debuff system is also working differently in uh, Battle for Middle-earth 2. Which I personally prefer a little bit, a little bit more. The way it works. So enemy units are reduced to 75% armor and 75% damage. I mean, it's pretty much the same, I guess, because the Kribane, also the debuff system in in uh, Rise of the Witch King, works pretty much the same way, but it's more confusing. You know, it modifies the enemy leadership, reduces by 30, 25, 33. This is more, you know, clear, in my opinion, you know exactly the enemy units are gonna deal now 75% damage and 75% armor. This way, you know, they lose 25 in both cases and 
no confusing description, which is kind of scary for every new player. If um, Tom Bombadil ready, will be used here on, around this side. Sonic Song incoming! There we go, beautiful. The old mighty Tom Bombadil from Middle Earth. The only person in Middle Earth which can who can't get affected by the one ring. That's pretty badass, if you ask me, boys. Okay, Farami is almost level 5. Level 6 will be needed for the leadership to be unlocked. Category Armo Buff. Boromir has a category Damage Leadership. And from King Dean, it was a High Tier Leadership, I think. Let me check again. Yeah, High Tier Spell. I don't know what it means. <laughs> 950 command points are readable, almost full command points for Ave Harry. Now full command points, by the way. On the other side, Ectelion sitting only on 450 command points. I can't even tell you guys what happened. Ectelion was so ahead. I mean, the game is not over yet. He was using the Man of the Ill defensively and also rallying call. He has now Undermine ability available. And uh, the second part is going to be important. Deals high damage at spawn point and light damage in the perimeter. The second part of the sentence doesn't make any sense for me. Maybe you can let me know what it means in the comment section below. But the high damage... Maybe now? Oh, that's going to be Fiesta, boys. I can smell that. Let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> he has it available. I think he's beating him. Do it. Oh, there we go. Oh, my goodness. Not only knocking them up, but knocking them towards to the Dwarven army. The Undermine. And he has now even the Earthquake ability available, which can devastate everything but the Fortress from the Man of the Best player, Avi <laughs> Avi. Holy guacamole. That was... You know what I like to see? That was hitting like an absolute truck. But it was not bursting down the enemy units, no. They are still alive. King Dean is almost level 7, by the way, which is gonna unlock the stubborn pride. By the way, it's gonna give you fear resistant. Farami has to be careful. Look at that. When he's getting hit, he can't move for a second. Like, it's like a mini stun, a mini stun I think. Boromi is level 5 and a half. Oh boy! Hold on, I was expecting a little bit more damage. I mean, it's a level 2 barracks, it's gonna be taken down now, but level 2 structures losing like 50% of the health. And also the fortress lost all the expansions around that. And King Dane is gonna die, there is no escape from this point. With level 10, he's gonna... Ooh, that was the Shutter Hammer, by the way, guys. Ooh, Gloin! Gloin is level 10! Gloin is level 10! Don't do it, Gloin! Gloin, do it! But guys, look at the animation now! Booyah! Holy moly! The animation! Like, it, this is like Balrog Summon, but it's looking so much cooler! I love the animation of the Shutter Hammer, boys! But... You know, when the hope of the Man of the West is gone, who can save the day? There, are, there can be only two heroes. One of them is just joining the battlefield, and the other one is Gandalf the Grey. Which, by the way, who, by the way, turns to Gandalf the White once he's level 5. Okay, uh, unfortunately, Aragorn was not able to get any experience from killing Gloin. And Aragorn is also badass once he's level 10. Summons the army of the dead. I mean, yeah, you know what it means. Oh, we have also Earthquake being used now offensively from Ave Ave. He's gonna commit to the fortress. Parami is throwing the sword. We have two captains of Gondor here. He's using, by the way, on the mineshaft, the Dwarven Riches. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, that's the Dwarven Riches, which is increasing the amount of uh, resources you are getting from this structure by 350%. But look at that. Ectelion has just enough units to save the day. And remember, he has enough power points to rebuild anyway. So, committing against a Dwarven Fortress can go... You know, in the other way, you might actually overcommit and lose everything. We're gonna have also the Ranger Summon now from Ave Havi, the Man of the West player, offensively. But again, he might win the fight with that, but I don't think he has enough melee units to actually achieve something from that point. 
They have also leadership from Boromir and Faramir. Uh, level 7 now, by the way, guys. Every ability from Faramir is being unlocked. The extroverts are defending the D. Uh, also, Boromir is going to unlock every single ability soon after killing this mineshaft. With level 7, the brothers of Middle-earth are unlocking every ability. Faramir is almost level 8. Uh, leadership, by the way, that, that stacks, unlike in uh, Rise of the Witch King, because they are different. Armor buff and damage buff. Aragorn is level, uh, level 2. The Blademaster is going to increase his damage and armor by each 50%. He's committing to the fortress now with Blademaster. He's killing the tower, I mean the tower first, yeah, the X-Tower has to be taken down first. Now we will see Hobbit allies summon uh, defensively from Exilion. During all this time, we have also some action going on around this side. The fortress is healing up slowly but surely. Aragorn is level 4 now, has his leadership unlocked. And just like King Dane, his category is high tier spell. So it also gives you the same amount of stats like the leadership from King Dane. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, yes, Aragorn is a very powerful hero, but keep, it, keep in mind that Gloin is level 10, and also King Dean was really close to level 10. And uh, King Dean, but also Gloin have a really strong level 10 ability. I mean, we have seen the power of the Shattered Hammer already, like a minute ago, around this area. Imagine once you are able to summon the Royal, Royal Guards with level 10, with Dean, this is gonna be absolutely fiesta. And also Undermine is available again. The Undermine was also doing crazy work for the Dwarven player, by the way. I mean, you know, it's kind of debatable which one is better. For me, I don't see, I don't compare the games with each other. This one is also not like a compare which is better. I was just trying to explain to you guys the differences between these two games. Undermine once again. But... I think it's absolutely fine to say that the animations of Battle for Middle-earth 2 are just so much better. King Dane is almost level 8. If he takes on Aragorn, who heal just in the last possible second, Boromir has to save his king. Man of Tail summon this time from Exilion in the middle of the map at the river. Boromir is full health, Aragorn is diving in, his Blade Master is on cooldown but will be available. Tom Bombadil will be summoned from... Uh, from uh, Ave Ave as well. And we will have Rallying Cold being used from the Man of the West player there at the same time. But the Rohirrim. Oof! <laughs> oh my god, it was hitting so hard that the subscribe button appeared at the bottom side of your screen. You know what that means. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and comment in the comment section below, boys. I would really, really appreciate that. Aramia has been taken down. Aragorn is going down. Boromir, unlike in the movies, is the survivor this time. And look at that. King Dean is level 9 as well. Whew. Oh my god, the Shattered Hammer, boys. It's so unbelievable. 13 power points collected, but the Dwarven player is sitting only on 450 command points. His resources are looking beyond terrible. We have a Lone Tower summon in the middle of the map from, uh, from Ave Ave. Um, I mean, I don't know about that. That's gonna delay his 25. Not really. I think you need to get more abilities unlocked, unlocked first before you go before you can go for the second. For Army of the Dead in this case. Tower is dying in a second. The Shake Foundation is just so strong against structures, boys. The tower is down. Okay. Gloin is finally going down. We have this time the X Tower. Or the Lone Tower summoned from the Dwarven player Exilion in the middle of the map. Oh, boys. During all this time, uh, oh, commitments here with the soldiers of Gonza. He was also using Rallying Call on this battle. Uh, the mineshaft has been taken down. There is only one hall of warriors. And the resources from both the players are not looking really good. 350 command points for Exilion. 850 command points. Okay. For Ave Ave. He has two barracks. He was also going for the marketplace. For the Grand Harvest. To get more resources from those farms. Now building finally, after such a long time, the archer range. To get some Gonda archers slash rangers on the field. The Hall of Warriors is going to be protected for, for now. Um, and I think it's very, very important to mention... Oh, we have a Siege Works level 2. And he's going for the Firestone upgrade. 
So he wanna go for the siege now with the trebuchets. And um, we will have Rohan allies and Hobbit allies ready. So he has enough follow-up this time to spot the trebuchets to keep them alive. Also Boromir, who is now level 9. Tower guards with the leadership of Boromir are gonna be very tanky. We will have the Horn of Konzo, which is gonna stun the enemy units. Beautiful. Rohan allies can be used now for the Rohirrim summon. And he can actually try to take down as many structures as possible. Hobbit allies now also being used. The first trebuchet should be joining the battlefield soon. Aragorn is back in the business. The only scary part here from uh, Fort Avehavi is the fact that if Gloin joins the battlefield again, it's going to be very difficult because, let's be honest, the Shattered Hammer is a game-changing ability and also King Dean is very close to level 10. Okay, the Forge Works is level 2. The Mineshaft is going down. We are going to get the first trebuchet on the field now. Alvin Wood also from Avehavi for the defense boost to make those tower guards even tankier. And also, uh, the units now from um, Exilion, he's gonna try his hardest to defend the fortress. Once the expansions are gone, he will start sieging the fortress. Remember, Rohan allies is awaitable, and the first trebuchet is already out on the field. But committing to the fortress against dwarves, like I said several times before, is kinda risky. Maybe it was like an overcommitment once again, I think he should have waited for the trebuchets to arrive and then don't go to attack with your units but use them to defend your trebuchets instead because with the trebuchets you are gonna be in a very very long range safe range and you can start sieging from a very safe distance Aragorn must be retreating from this point he has Atelas though heal is on cooldown but Atelas is a small heal we know that and there we go, Gloin is back on the back on the menu, boys. I don't know about the Shattered Armor, though. Holy guacamole. Someone tell me that Shattered Armor meant to siege, but... Holy man, that's actually so... Okay, he's using the Blade Master. Remember, the Atelas is available. With Blade Master, Aragorn is pretty strong. But is he strong enough? Level 10 Gloin, boys. He's level 10 with 3,200 health. Aragorn has more health. I think Aragorn would win this 1v1 situation, especially with the Blade Master. It looks like he was not reviving his Gloin. I mean, obviously, uh, the Dwarven player doesn't have a lot of resources. What? The Undermine was actually one-shotting the Trebuchet. I didn't know that, that this is possible. I mean, there are a lot of things I don't know about this patch just yet. That's a brand new version of this beta. So, you know, this is not even the final version just yet. They are obviously playing quite a lot of games on this patch, trying to understand what is strong, what is not so strong, so they can balance before they go for the release. Okay, Rohan allies will be summoned. The fortress is safe for now. On the other side, we have Men of Deal coming up next. It's gonna be available within the next 10 seconds. Both players are using the tower. But Gloin is like a siege machine. With the with the Shake Foundation, he's almost one-shotting this battle tower within a second. Um, yeah, this game isn't over yet. Obviously, it looks like so much better for Avi Havi now that he has the map control. That he's the one who's attacking. But the battle wagons, nice catch here from Ectelion. I like this quite a lot. Making sure to kill the trebuchets, knowing the fact that they are the they are the units he needs to take down first. <laughs> Boromir is flying like a like a like a fly in the sky. And Boromir, there is no way of escaping this point. Like, oh heal will be used. He's gonna try to save the day. He needs to kill the battle wagon first. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he needs to do. Because if you run away, obviously you can run away from Gloin, but you can't outrun a battle wagon with Boromir. That's not possible. Okay, the farm is going down next. That's a huge move here from Ectelion, by the way, boys. Because he was able to destroy the siege works, he knows, okay, trebuchets, I don't need to be too much worried about trebuchets anymore. Okay, Gloin is getting knocked down from Boromir. Uh, Men of Teal, I mean, Men of Teal and Ranged at the same time. I think Gloin is gonna die here, potentially. Yeah, Gloin is gonna die, he's dead already. No, he's not dead. Like, every every Dwarven unit is looking the same, I can't even say who is who. The Shatterham is on cooldown. Earthquake is available though. He can use it if he wants to, but heal is gonna save the day anyway. Imagine, guys, a combination with the Shatterhammer and the Earthquake ability from the spellbook at the same time. 
I think you can literally destroy everything around that, maybe even the fortress, if you are using the slam, but also shake foundation right after. Um, I would also love to see Gimli. Gimli is very, very powerful, we know that. But for now, he's gonna revive his King Dane, which makes a lot of sense because he's very close to level 10. And obviously, he's the, you know, for me, the best hero when it comes to sport, the units with the leadership, with the mighty rage, which can also buff the units, by the way, also debuff the enemy units. And then uh, the King's Favor giving experience, like Theodin. And then you have the Stubborn Pride for the Fear Resistant, which can be very important against Boromir's Horn of Gonza, for example. Oh, but overcommitment here from Magdalion. That was really not necessary. And that's gonna, that's gonna turn the game around once again. I mean, in this situation, I think Ectelion has to make sure to not overcommit with those heroes because they are his highest win conditions. Earthquake is available now for the past one minute from both the players. We have 21 power points collected by Avi Havi sitting on full command points and with the marketplace, he has a great amount of resource. And come look, out, look at all these level 3 farms. There we go. And actually not. Increases command point limit by 50. Can this even be true? I can't believe that. This is different than the Rise of the Witch King. Apparently it is, if the description is true and correct. Because in, in Rise of the Witch King, a level 1 farm is going to give you 50% increased command points. And level 2, 75. And level 3, even 100. Okay. Oh, he was trying to get level 10 by creeping the troll layer, which was the last creep remaining. He's very close to level 10. The summon the royal guards is gonna be pretty good. Summon several battalions of the dwarves to Dane's side. And look at that, he's gonna hit level 10 in this situation. I don't, I, but he's left alone. I mean, he's gambling now. It's a risky move. Okay, he's level 10, he's gonna call him. Call them, call them. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, but he's he's dying. He's dying, boys. Look at this extroverts and everything. We're gonna he's running for his life. There is a mineshaft he can enter and try to get away. Saving him is very important. Cloud break is being used. And that's why look, imagine King Dane would be close enough. Aragon is dead, by the way. Look at the royal guards, guys. Look at that. Guardians, extroverts, and pikes with full upgrades. Holy guacamole, they are hitting like an absolute truck. Look at the birds on the on the tower as well. Paramir is also almost level 10. But we need to agree on one thing. The, the impact of the heroes of the Dwarven player Ectelion have just much more impact on the game than the heroes from Ave Ave and his Men of the West faction. Okay, one arrow was used. I mean, again, he has not a level 10 ability. So getting him level 10 is going to give you also... Obviously more damage, you know, with the auto attacks, but it's not going to be like a game-changing thing getting him level 10. Oh, nice. One. I Actually, it deals quite a lot of damage. And Army of the Dead. Fight for me by Ave Have. Gimli is on the field as well. And by the way, guys, the Shatterhammer from Gloin in Battle for Middle-earth 2 is able to stun the Army of the Dead. Not to kill them, no. But to stun them. And that's absolutely fine for Exilion. Guess what? Because he was able to save both his heroes. Gimli and also uh, King Dane were able both able to get away. Okay, we have Boromir almost level 10. Faramir almost level 10. Uh, Gimli has to get level 5 for his Slayer. Uh, double speed, 50% increased damage. Loses armor, but that's absolutely fine. And has 80% chance of knockback. That means... 8 from 10 attacks should be able to knock back the enemy heroes or units once Slayer is active. And like I said a couple of times, the level of experience in Battle for Middle-earth 2 is much much faster. Level 4 already. Parami level 10. Ooh, one more hit is gonna be needed and Gimli is gonna die today to Faramir. Faramir the hero, the saver of the day. It's such a back and forth game. We have King Dane level 10 and Gloin level 10 guys, that's crazy. Aragorn is back on the field as well. He is never going for Gandalf. I would love to see Gandalf in this situation. Slowly but surely destroying this farm with the hobbits coming from the inn at the bottom left side. By the way, the hobbits are able 
I mean, the Hobbits, you can actually recruit them with the Dwarven faction if you have the inn under your control. And he has both the inns under his control, at the bottom left side, but also at the top right side. Okay, so Summon Royal Guard is going to be available within the next 20 seconds. And Shatterhammer is available already. Uh, Earthquake was used from both the players, by the way, guys. Um, where did he use that one? I, I'm not sure. Okay. We have a level 2 Hall of Warriors with 6,500 health. The tower is still remaining on the field. Oof. The animation, though. I mean, guys, you gotta love the animation of the Shattered Hammer. He has also Barrage. Man of Steel. Oh, Gandalf. I mean, not Gandalf. Aragorn is surrounded. Aragorn is not having the best day of his life. Dying quite fast, actually. Bottom is running for his life as well. The hobbits are so fast. Look at that. <laughs> they are running him down. Can they kill him? I guess they can. Man of Deal will be used as well. At the bottom left side for defensive purposes. Boromir. And Ave Ave is going to leave the game. That's going to be it. It was a great game for me to cast. I mean, we have seen the power of the heroes. That's why it's absolutely okay if you invest so much time into them. By recruiting them early. And the fact that your heroes are leveling up much faster in Battle for Middle-earth 2 makes them worth every single penny of investment. And definitely game-changing, by the way. King Dane with the Royal Guards and also um, Gloin with the Shatterhammer. Oh, man. It was, it was quite, quite impressive. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I see you next time. Take care of yourself. And as always, guys, stay beyond standards. Peace, boys.